Jedi. You've got to do Jedi shit. In this video, we're going to talk about doing the work. And this is why so many um, scammy advertisements are working out there because they're designed to message to you that you can make a gang of money without doing the work. That's the presumptive thing. And this, this is what everyone is looking for. Everyone is looking for those magic jelly beans of you being able to make money without burdening yourself with work, effort, stress, responsibility. Everyone wants to make stress-free money. Everyone wants to have money that just comes in with a little effort. And one of the things that I'm trying to illustrate to you guys is that ain't gonna work. It's just not gonna work. Um, this is why I say what I say about many of the YouTubers who like, let's, let's have this conversation right here. Being a YouTuber in the how to make money bitch, how personal finance niche can be extremely profitable. My smaller channel, Savage Finance, makes twice what this channel makes. And um, going on, I see a day when Savage Finance will be doing 30,000, 40,000 a month. I see that day coming because this month is going to be better than last month and the next month is just going to keep getting better and better and better. So many of these YouTubers are incentivized by what gets views versus what helps you. And there's that's why there's so much BS on YouTube. There's a girl, uh, I'm going to do, review her videos because essentially she is what I feel a chosen one. Uh, if you've noticed that you will see someone, not necessarily a great personality, you will have someone that YouTube will choose and push the crap out of their videos. Like uh, Graham Stephan. I have said no less than 19 times I don't wanna watch his videos, yet YouTube keeps pushing them to me. So when you have YouTube pushing your video like that, you can't help but be successful. I have like been on notes saying I don't wanna watch these videos. I went down, there's little three little buttons under the video you can hit, not interested. And I've hit that 18 times and YouTube still keeps pushing its videos to me. So you, you're getting a lot of messaging that is incentivized by telling you what gets views versus what's going to actually help you to be successful. And I will tell you from putting up videos like some of my car videos, car business videos, they don't really do that well because people are not interested in working. And this, this is something that I need to stress to you guys, and I really, really need to hammer home. You're not going to have a lot of money. Once again, having a lot of money is different than being wealthy. Then let's, let's talk about the stages of this. There's the first stage of being well paid. Being well paid, I would put that in the realm of $80,000 a year, and more, 80 to 120, 80 to 130. That's being well paid and with proper money management and the right investment choices, you can become wealthy over a long period of time with those, with those income levels. And when I say a long period of time, I am talking 25, 35, 40 years. Now, that's one of the first stages because it gives you excess income. Now, being rich 
is 250 to half a million a year because you make enough money you make more money in one month than the average person makes in a year so that's rich what's the difference between being rich and wealthy rich lebron james is rich lebron james is a mixture because i'm quite sure lebron james has significant investments and endorsements but here's the thing lebron still has to work LeBron works on Christmas Day. I want you to think about that. LeBron cannot just say, hey, I'm going to call in. Hey, you know, I'm sick. I can't play the day. No, 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 no. So LeBron makes a lot of money. LeBron is very rich. I'm going to say that LeBron is probably wealthy as well because, you know, he doesn't strike me as an idiot. But he still has to work for his money. I want you to think about that. Uh, any NBA player, any Major League Baseball player, any NFL player still has to work for their money. And they get these massively huge paychecks. But let's look at what happens to NBA players, NFL players, and Major League Baseball players once they retire. A lot of them are broke because they never developed any wealth, which takes, developing wealth takes discipline. Like, um, one of the reasons that I am going through all of these headaches, going through all of these trials and tribulations with the car business is the future. There's right now, which is pretty frustrating. I mean, to go out and buy a car and have it break down and have a significant repair, which would have happened to anyone who had bought those same cars because these repairs happened within a week of ownership, within a week. And one of the reasons, I, you know, because I was thinking about that, I was like, why is this happening? And it hit me. These cars have been sitting for God, how no, God knows how long. And because they've been sitting, stuff just kind of froze up, dried up. And I, I really think that if these cars had been driven consistently, I don't think I would have had those repairs. But I think the big issue is these cars have been sitting. And that's one of the reasons that I think they broke. But right now, I'm in the beginning phases. And I've, I've had many people question it because everyone is hammered with the messaging of you can make a lot of money without doing a lot of work. This is the message, this is the dream, this is the consensus. And one of the reasons I'm showing you this and I'm talking about the good, the bad, the ugly is to impress upon you guys that even if you have money, even if you have experience, you still got to work. Let me say that again. Even if you have money, even if you have experience, you still got to work. Because right now, I am working. And I predict that I will be working right up until about December of January. And then I'm going to, you know, I got one employee. And I'm probably going to get another one because... I am just looking at, you know, because I got to put together the SOPs. I got to put together like, you know, an SOP for like what happens when a renter is in a car and it breaks down? What do we do? First thing you do is apologize to the renter. The second thing is, does it need to be towed? Is the car still drivable? And if we have the inventory, the idea would be to switch them out. But if we don't have inventory, we're just going to have to refund their money. And we got to create a, a, a really direct SOP. I got to put them on some cards so someone can come into the office and like, oh, this happened. This is what I need to do. This happened. This is what I need to do. I got to label, label all the keys. So there's a lot more work. There's a lot more work to come. 
And this is one of the things, because I've had many people like, why are you, you know, the car business seems like a lot of hassle. Now, I actually feel that once I get this to where I want to be in within, let's say from August to next August, once again, I'm talking about a year. Actually, I'm talking about 13 and a half months from now. 13 and a half months. 13 and a half months, I should be, in the future, I should be doing 100K a month from this car rental business. And then six months after that, I should be able to take money out because I calculate that within six months, maybe seven to eight months. Let's just go ahead and say a year. So from 13 months into the future, which is gonna be, my money is gonna be invested for about 15 months. And then six months after that, or eight months after that, I should get my $300,000 back. So, and also, another reason I'm doing this is, I want you to name, put them in the comments, an investment where you can invest $300,000 and in 15 months, get your $300,000 back. And at that point, your investment has created a cash cow. So, 15 months in the future, well, let's say, 22 months in the future. Let's go ahead and say 22 months in the future. I should have my $300,000 back, which is, in my opinion, a very short time to have my $300,000 back because essentially money was just sitting in my checking account doing nothing. So now my money is actually working with the assistance of me. And at the 22 month mark, or about the 25 month mark, I should be able to take six figures per month out of this business. Let me say that again. 25 months in the future, I should be able to take six figures per month out of this business, which would be one point five billion a year, 25 months in the future. To me, this is worth doing to get to that payday because it has made me kind of look at it because there's some other business ideals I want to start. And there's some other things I want to do. And what that money will do is give me plenty of capital to do whatever I want to do. So 25 months in the future, I'll be making, because I will probably start pulling money out of this business at the 15th month. 15th month, I'll start pulling money out of the business. Because at that point, as of the video that's on Savage Finance, how to live off $500 forever, I am using that same tactic in this business. Because once I create that spin it up to that certain level where I can buy 10 cars each and every month or, you know, as we go down this path, things may adjust. Um, some things may adjust a little differently. Um, it just depends upon, oh, what the heck? It, may, it just depends upon what happens, what opportunities come our way, because let me go ahead and kind of give you an idea. Because let's say we get up to the business is doing 100K a month. Now, I could buy 10 cars for hire car at 100K a month, or I can buy three or four cars for, um, Toro. So, you know, I don't know whichever is going to be profitable 
because let me tell you, because right now I'm doing some Jedi stuff. I'm doing some Jedi stuff. Uh, at some point, I'm getting my commercial insurance, which will open up the door for me to rent the wreck. So, there's a lot of unknowns at the moment. There's a lot of what ifs. But let's say we got up to 100K and they gave me the ability to buy four cars for Toro. And we get the airport facility going at a small level. So we have the Mercedes and we have the four cars. So we buy four cars for Toro every month. Within 10 months, we would have 40 cars for Toro. 40 in 10 months. And they would be BMWs, they would be Range Rovers, they would be Porsche, they would be Mercedes. There would not be anything normal or regular in the fleet. And essentially, this is one of the things I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build a Toro fleet, and I'm gonna build a hire car fleet because it's a different customer for each platform. So, once again, once we get to that 100K per month, and at that point, I'll have my dealer's license, so I'll be able to go to the auction and get these cars at a discount. I won't have to pay dealer markup. I will have to pay taxes because once I take that car and title it under Mac Daddy Deluxe, and then I'm gonna have to get a tag, I'm gonna have to pay taxes and all, of, all, all this other stuff. So, but it will save me what the dealer would have made on the car which could be quite significant when you spread this across 40 cars. 40 cars, I could probably save 150, maybe $200,000. So just depending upon the kind of car. Um, so that that's one ideal in my head. And once again, I'm showing you guys, I'm starting with money, I'm starting with experience, and I'm starting with a business plan. And it's still gonna take time. And this is why these clowns on YouTube piss me off because they're, they're doing it to get YouTube money. I have no doubt in my head why they're not, why they're doing it. They're doing it to get YouTube money. They're not doing it to help you. They're not doing it to be of service to you. They're doing it to get YouTube money because I see in the future, Savage Finance doing 30,000 a month probably this time next year this time next year and one of the things that you have to understand is when you're watching YouTube or if you're listening to someone on social media what is their agenda and I have no problem with someone creating a product or service that they want to sell they want to make money I have no problem with that. I have a problem with people consciously lying to you, leaving out important details to get views. I got a problem with that. I got a huge, huge problem with that because one of the things that you guys have got to understand and one of the things you guys have got to acknowledge is everyone is out for self. Everyone is out to hook themselves up. And YouTubers are absolutely the worst. Uh, that's why I will start doing reviews on positive YouTubers. Uh, I got some ideals, but there's, there's some good YouTubers out there who don't get the shine, who don't get the views we're putting out. Like the one I did about the girl who had a very realistic, portrayal of fire she 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 had a very realistic very common sense and she should be getting more views but someone that says hey i'm gonna retire eight years and they leave out all of the details they leave out the number this video will get fifty thousand views because people are looking to get to the payday without the work That, that's just not gonna work. It's just not gonna work. And through this experiment, because 25 months in the future, which is 
two years, two years in one month. In the future, I'm gonna create revenue of 1.5 million for me. It's gonna be greater than that, but I will be able to slide 1.5 million in my pocket in two years. And a lot of people are talking about fire and investing and flipping houses. Uh, one of the reasons that I have kind of pulled back from real estate is real estate can be great, but real estate takes a lot of money or a lot of leverage, which I don't like. Uh, one of the reasons I'm not financing my cars because if I was financing my cars, as in the video that I put up the other day, I would be deeper in the hole than I am. Because essentially, I will work my way out of the repair hold. I've already worked my way out the repair hold. And I will get this other business credit card paid off probably by the middle of July. And then we will see what happens. Because one of the things that I have acknowledged and I know, we're going to have repairs. This is just going to be a part of my life going forward. When you're buying used cars that have been sitting for a while, you're going to have repairs. It's just going to be part of the situation. It's just going to, it's just part cost of doing business. It's just going to be a cost of doing business because I got to go through all of that stuff to get to the 1.5 million in 25 months in the future. I gotta do this now. It's like losing weight. I've lost 40 pounds since last October, but I started in October and here it is in June. Now you see the results. So I'm probably going to do some more alternate day fasting. I'm probably gonna do it for three months to lose another 10 pounds. Um, one of the things that you guys have got to understand is you've got to establish the basis of work and scaling. Because one of the reasons, <clears throat> as for that moist man, you would have made more money if you financed the cars. Spoken by someone who has never started a business, spoken by someone who's never had any money in their life, spoken by someone who don't know what the hell they're talking about because Essentially, I'm showing you guys the real, the truth, the honest. I'm showing you guys reality. And most of these YouTubers are selling you a pipe dream. You can make $25,000 doing stock options with a small amount of money. Um, essentially, right now, the stock market is a big old game. And the stock market has been in a bull market for like the last 11 years. So a monkey with a blindfold on can throw darts at a stock chart and pick winners. What's going to happen when that changes? And at some point in the future, it's going to change. At some point in the future, you're not going to be able to do that. So I want you guys to join me in doing the work. I'm gonna create a new training program, corporate papers. I'm gonna put some different stuff in it. It's gonna build on some other stuff. If you're in the corporate toolbox, you're not have to pay for it, you're gonna get it. If you're in the art of holding, you're gonna get it. And essentially what I'm gonna do is shut off the art of holding and move everyone to B-School for Hustlers. Because that, that was an experiment. I didn't like how that experiment went. So I'm gonna move everyone over there because uh, probably today I'm gonna change the pricing at the Art of Holding to make it so high that no one ever would buy it and then move people over to B-School for Hustlers and then start talking, start the training with the corporate papers because I have good credit, <clears throat> I have money, <clears throat> I have a business that makes money and it's still gonna take me a year to develop real business credit. Real business credit. I'm not talking about a $5,000 Chase Inc. card. Big whoop. So you got three Chase Inc. cards with $5,000 limits. 
you got 15k that's it because essentially what these people leave out is like how they get these business credit cards and they never show you what their credit card limit is they never show you how much business credit they have they're just like oh you can do this and i got this and they never get into the fine details because all right you go out and get three chase inc business credit cards inc for your business off of your fico you got fifteen thousand dollars okay i got two secured wells fargo business credit cards at twenty five thousand dollars I got $50,000 worth of business credit over there. I got $150,000 on my Divi um, credit card. And honestly, I don't use the Divi credit card that much because it's a charge card. See, I want the flexibility because as I build out Mac Daddy Autos, the flexibility of having credit cards and the option to float money for 60 days is going to be very significant because I just got a new one and my statement isn't going to drop until the end of July. So, and then I'm going to have 30 days to pay that. So I can take this $3,400 repair that I got to pay for the day and float that two months. And that's what I'm going to start doing because I don't want it to come out of cash flow. I want, you know, this is a special credit card for repairs, oil changes, key fob, inspections, and all this other stuff that I know are gonna come because uh, the next time I start buying cars, it's gonna be a totally different procedure. Uh, I'm going to go to the dealer and was like, look, I wanna have this guy, this car inspected by my guy. How do we set that up? Have the car inspected by my guys, see what's wrong with it, and use that inspection to deal. It's like, either you can fix this or I will fix this. If I fix it, I need that the, the, those inspect, the, the cost of those repairs taken off the price of the car. And if you don't wanna do that, you have a good day. And that's gonna be, cause essentially um, I was using one company and it did not go well. It didn't cost a lot, but I, I need to call my guy and see how much they charge for uh, new car inspections and essentially what I'm going to do is take that car to my mechanic have them look over it and you know does it need an oil change does it you know all of this stuff go back so my intake process is going to become a little slower but it's going to be better it's going to be refined and then um, I got to start looking for my GPS guy and some other stuff so the next round which will be phase three, <clears throat> which will start August or September. I don't know. And stage three is when I will start buying more cars again and I will have all of these little issues fixed and we will be cooking with gas. But once again, if you want to be a Jedi, you got to do some Jedi shit. If you want to be a Jedi, you want to slay the Death Star, you got to pick up that lightsaber and do some work. So that's all I got for you guys. Be looking for the corporate papers training to be coming in July. Uh, I'm gonna start open that up and work on that. And you're gonna like it. You're really gonna like it because like all these folks who are talking about how you can get cheap, small business credit lines. Cause essentially if you're going off your FICO and you're going off your income, your business credit lines I mean, I guarantee you, there are many people here on YouTube who are talking about Chase Inc. business credit cards. I guarantee you, my two Wells Fargo secured credit cards has more credit than their five or six. I guarantee it. Because I know, because this is one of the things. People don't want to talk about something that's not that significant. They're like, hey, here's my Chase Inc. And he will not tell you the credit limit. That's important information because if you're gonna tell someone, hey, you can go out and get business credit, all right, you should be talking about the process. And like, it is true, if you have a 750 FICO and you have good credit, um, good credit, you can get business credit with your LLC. But if you're going off your income, you're not gonna get that much credit. Why did I start off, why did I max out the Wells Fargo credit card because when it unsecures 
I want it to be in the position where I can take it from 25,000 to 50,000. And I'm not gonna do that with 2,000 or $3,000 secured deposit. I need to show Wells Fargo that I can handle a larger credit limit and consistently pay it off and handle it responsibly. So when they unsecure it, they unsecure it at 25 or <clears throat> as the Wells Fargo banker told me, he said, they may unsecure it at a higher limit depending upon your usage. So once again, it just depends. So we will see, and I will, once that happens, I will make a video and give you the data points of my spend. Because essentially, uh, that card I've had for 10 months. And pretty much, once I get it paid off, I'm probably not gonna use it a lot because I'm gonna switch all the spend to the Mac Daddy Autos business credit card. So I'm just showing you this guys, this stuff from the real, real business, real truth, no fluff, no BS, none of these unicorns and rainbows of you going to start this business in four weeks, you're gonna be making $30,000 a month. It ain't happening. But be on the lookout for corporate papers and I will see you guys in the next one.